good afternoon everyone so today in this lecture we will be talking about nutrition for the renal patients or nutrition in renal diseases without wasting any time let's start the presentation first of all you may have seen in hospitals there are many types of diets for an example diabetic diet is there then renal diet is there the normal diet is there then there are like many many variants of diets for the patients to select so we should know why is diet important basically here we will focus about renal diet renal diet minimizes the amount of waste so that is the basic idea of this diet now for a patient who is having a renal disease what does that mean that the patient's waste excretion is impaired or the kidneys are not working properly so that means he cannot excrete waste in a proper manner so renal diet focuses on minimizing the amount of waste so a good meal plan choices can minimize build up of waste products and fluid between treatments and also improve nutritional and functional status and also conserve the muscle mass otherwise this type of patients are at a risk of getting wasted so we know being cachexic key parts of renal diet include calories protein carbohydrate lipids fluid potassium phosphorus sodium vitamins other minerals now here pay attention we have included all the main parts the macronutrients and micronutrients protein carbohydrate and lipids we consider as macronutrients then the energy and calories body draw on own muscle tissue for energy loss of lean body mass we call it the muscle wasting patient becomes malnourished in that case that happens if there is a inadequate calorie intake pay attention here in in a case of inadequate calorie intake then the protein intake indicator of this diet is or oh, generally the protein intake indicator is albumin low albumin due to low protein intake can result in muscle loss undesired weight loss we feeling or being lethargic less desire to eat or loss of appetite and higher chances of infection and longer time to heal that's a we call that's a vicious cycle low albumin makes it harder for dialysis to remove fluid again pay attention to that point low albumin makes it harder for the dialysis to remove fluid let's move on to the next part protein sources what are the main protein sources we have two types of protein sources animal sources and plant sources from here the most important is the animal sources animal sources include meat meat fish poultry eggs and dairy products these are high biological value protein and complete protein in high biological value protein we have 50 to 75% of intake while complete protein give all essential amino acids i am pretty sure that you know there are 20 essential amino acids or 20 main amino acids then we have commercial protein sources as well maybe you have seen people who go to the gym and all they use commercial protein sources those consider those consist of oral supplements now here they commonly call them the protein shakes here oral supplements we have nepro for dialytic patients suplina for non dialytic patients protein powders bars clinic mix and protein x intradialytic parenteral nutrition or idpn 
that we do when there's loss of appetite failure to thrive failure of oral nutrition supplements and no improved albumin trend noted with other interventions in such symptoms we used intradialytic parenteral nutrition or idpn in short form potassium limit potassium is a mineral found mostly in fruits and vegetables that is a mineral it is also added to many food as preservative do not use sole substitutes if you have potassium limit so we cannot use salt substitutions if there is a limit for potassium then phosphorus kidneys get rid of extra phosphorus in case of low kidney function that means phosphorus is high calcium will come out of the bone resulting in bone diseases tissue calcification and problems with the heart symptoms of this is itching red eyes and joint pain sometimes obvious calcium deposits might be there calcification of vessel evident are on x rays calcifications on vessel of vessels are evident on x ray phosphorus is a mineral found in almost all foods then we are moving on to the one of the main things that is salt or sodium chloride sodium helps your body to balance fluid and chemicals kidneys remove extra sodium in urine dialysis can be hard with extra sodium in your body may result in high blood pressure fluid retention or edema and lead to shortness of breath so again pay attention to the last points dialysis can be hard with extra sodium in your body so we have to be careful to take low sodium diet and also sodium results in hypertension or high blood pressure fluid retention edema and leads to sob phosphorus and calcium phosphate retention occurs with decline in renal function as a result serum calcium goes down a lower serum calcium concentration stimulates an increase in secretion of parathormone which results to withdrawal of calcium from the bones the bones abnormalities may develop next the high phosphorus foods those are processed meats with phosphate additives dairy products like milk cheese ice cream puddings and custards yogurt soda cola peanut butter nuts seeds and beans then the fluids adverts to consume 500 to 600 fluid more than their 24 hour urine output this will provide for the insensible daily loss of water urinary output plus insensible loss is calculated by 12 milliliters per kilogram per day patients are advised for thirst and fluid control here first of all track your fluids how to track your fluid by avoid chewing lots of ice avoid refills at restaurant avoid super sized beverages and small glass at meals and meat in case of hot weather and temperature keep your skin cold with cold wash cloths mist bottle keep your lips moist with chapstick keep your mouth wet keep your mouth clean toothpaste or dry mouth then rinse your mouth with cold water but don't swallow it why we restrict the fluids intake then chew on gum quench gum then try lemon wedges or freeze grapes and strawberries nephritic syndrome another very important syndrome in renal cases nephritic syndrome nutritional management diet to treat underlying disease restrict diet if necessary to control symptoms protein restricted in uremia and sodium restriction in hypertension 
and potassium restriction in hyperkalemia. So in case of uremia, we restrict protein. In case of hypertension, we restrict sodium. In case of hyperkalemia, we restrict potassium. Here, the chart shows you the energy and sodium, phosphorus, potassium fluid and mineral intake in cases of chronic kidney disease, in hemolysis and other kidney diseases. So when you get the presentation, please refer to these PPTs. Then we are moving to chronic renal failure. Again, before moving into the chronic renal failure, in this table, pay attention how much of energy they have and protein and other intakes, especially fluid intake, they have used in case of chronic, dis chronic kidney disease. Here the fluid intake is unrestricted, but here in case of hemodialysis, 500 to 750 depending on urine output here in peritoneal dialysis cases of that is individualized what is this that depends on the individual like that you have you can refer to this table and get an idea about how minerals and other micronutrients are given at a case of chronic kidney disease hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis Let's move on to the chronic renal failure, which is a chronic kidney disease. Hemodialysis. What happened there? Removes concentrated molecules and excess fluid from patient blood through diffusion and ultrafiltration. Three parts of the system are the dialyzer or the artificial kidney or the machine, then the dialysis machine and the dialysate requires vascular access usually through AV or arteriovenous fistula. AV fistula. In a case of hemodialysis, the patient's objectives for diet are to maintain protein and energy balance, prevent dehydration or fluid overload, maintain normal serum potassium and sodium levels, and to maintain acceptable phosphate and calcium levels. Other dietary concerns are to avoid protein energy malnutrition, to maintain body mass index within upper 50th percentile, fluid intake 1000 milliliters per day plus amount equal of urine output, to limit sodium like 1000 to 3000 milligrams per day, to limit potassium 1500 to 3000 milligrams per day and supplement of water soluble vitamins like vitamin B and C because vitamin K, A, D are fat soluble vitamins. Then case of peritoneal dialysis. Nutritional therapy focuses on increased protein intake to 1.2 to 1.5 grams per kilogram per body weight, limit phosphorus to 1200 to 1500 milligrams per day, increase potassium via a wide variety of fruits and vegetables, encourage liberal fluid intake, avoid sweets and fats, maintain lean body weight and this is the diet prescription. The dietary factor hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. Here you can refer to the energy intake, phosphorus, sodium, potassium, fluid and other mineral. Here pay attention energy intake kilocalories per kilogram of ideal body weight. In hemodialysis we should pay attention 30 to 35 here 25 to 35 like there are differences so you can refer to this table once you get the presentation this table works as the we say diet prescription 
then the acute renal failure ARF diet in acute renal failure nutrition therapy focuses on or the goal is to improve maintain nutritional status parental nutrition therapy may be required recommendations for protein intake have been debated individualized therapy based on renal function indicated by glomerular filtration rate here the parenteral nutrition therapy may be required and protein intake recommendation is still on doubt here is the dietary prescription in a case of acute renal failure then we have the nephrotic diet in case of nephrotic syndrome nephrotic syndrome protein 0.8 to 1 gram per kilogram of ideal body weight is recommended sodium based on fluid status that means we decide sodium depending on status of fluid potassium and other minerals like calcium and phosphorus monitored and individualized fluid is not restricted diet therapy probably not effective for hyperlipidemia here this table works as the dietary prescription in case of nephrotic syndrome the diet order should state the energy protein and sodium level desired this table works as a prescription for the dietitian then the nephritic diet which we use in case of nephritic syndrome nutritional management goal is to treat underlying disease restrict diet if necessary to control symptoms protein restricted in uremia sodium restricted in hypertension and potassium restricted in hyperkalemia calculate diet or if there is a stone how we should prepare diet general dietary principles of kidney stones here this table works as a prescription or diet prescription normally calcium phosphate oxalate struic uric acid and cysteine should be low in every case then we have the general diet for renal patients food selection guide here we have fat sugar sweets and all food groups and what are the things we should allow and avoid or restrict for an example in case of fat we can use cooking fat butter margarine salad oils and dressings but we should avoid using coconuts and other nuts like that we have vegetables fruit milk rice and meat or other substitutes childhood renal diseases in case of a childhood renal disease for children protein intake should not be less than 1.0 to 1.3 grams per kilogram per day to assure adequate protein supply for growth if there is loss of protein in the urine the diet should provide an equal quantity to replace this normal the calorie intake should be 60 to 80 kilocalories per kilogram per day if you have any questions you can directly ask from us you can use viber whatsapp or email or else if you have any other questions you can always send the questions or when we see each other at ihs after this pandemic you will be able to ask and clarify all your questions we hope you understood today's lecture we hope all of you all to be safe and we hope to see you soon thank you very much for your time